Hello, I'm Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and I want to share with you about hauling today in EVE Online. So, in EVE, one of the basic things that, um, that go with any economy is the transportation of goods. And the transportation of goods is the lifeblood of any marketplace activities. So there are a lot of ways to make money in the markets here, and we'll get into that in detail in other videos. But what I want to share with you right now is basically a skill of hauling stuff. Whether it's your own stuff or whether it's someone else's stuff, it all makes you money. Now, it is very, very difficult to use hauling as a primary source of income to plex your account without billions in outlay, and I mean billions. With a jump freighter, you can do it. The risk is very, very high though, and jump freighters are like four and a half billion isk just to buy. You lose one of those, you're having a bad day. So, in, in starting with hauling, the, the basics of it is that you can take a contract from somebody and you can move stuff from one place to another that will fit in, fit in your ship and get paid for it. You have to put up collateral, and the collateral can be a lot of money. Now, there are a lot of little runs out there, a lot of stuff that's worth a couple hundred million that you can fit into your ship. Now, not everything will fit into your ship. This right here is an example of a Tier 1 uh, ship, hauling ship, that is uh, considered to be industrial. And uh, it may be able to haul a lot of stuff, but it has a very, it's, it's, it's a, you know, paper armor. So you can be one shot in this, and when you're hauling something for someone else, if you get blown up, whatever collateral you put up, whether it's like 100 million, let's say, that you put up, you lose it, as well as you lose your ship, as well as you lose the cargo. Not very good. So I'm going to share with you in the description uh, some fits for what I would consider to be good for actually making some money. And um, now, like I said, these don't uh, qualify as totally being, you know, to play for free. This is an add-on to anything that you're doing so that you can increase your income. So just call this all bonus. And because the other stuff, you're doing it anyway, and you're, you're buying stuff, you're taking your faction warfare goods, bringing them to market, you're selling stuff, and you got to move that stuff. If you have room left over and there's a contract available, you may as well pick up that stuff and move it with it as long as the risk is not too high. Okay, so let me just go over some ships really quick. This is tier one. I don't recommend doing uh, much high dollars in tier one. Maybe a hundred million, maybe two hundred million at the max, especially if you have to go through Udema or Narja. Uh, both of these both of these sectors are pinch points where code and goons uh, watch for freighters and they will kill you if they think that your value that you have in your ship is worth them taking a loss of a ship and then being able to pick up the item. So the formula kind of goes like this. If they can lose their ship that's worth 100 million and you're carrying say 400 million worth of stuff on you and they blow you up the other guys are able to come in, swoop in, pick up the stuff. If they think they can pick up 200 million worth of stuff, then they're going to do it. They're going to blow you up, even in high sec. It even happens at JITA, which is, I believe, a 1.0 high sec system. It happens everywhere. And so you got to be very leery of that, uh, including being leery of fake contracts that are just set up to gank. I will show you one of those before the end of this video. So um, here we go. We've got um, we've got a lot of um, uh, contracts or not contracts. Uh, a lot of different ships here. The there are several different types of ships. This is a T2 Viator, and it's um, it's set up for really high amount of defense and be very, very quick. These ships are not cheap. Um, I probably have, I don't know, 300 million into this ship, but it's got some very special stuff about it. One, okay, so it can hold 4,500 in here. It's not a very, uh, it's not very big, 
but there are a lot of contracts out there, I kid you not, that the value on them is a couple of billion, and they're like 10 units, 10 M3. I mean, they're very, very small. It might be some sort of blueprint or whatever, and one of the really nice things about the, uh, about the Viator, and, and this is included in all of the blockade runners, that uh, the blockade runners cannot be scanned. The cargo cannot be scanned. I can't stress that enough. If you want to take something out and you want to have the security of knowing that nobody knows what you have in your cargo hold, which is very, very important for not getting ganked. Now, if you're going into low sec or null sec, that's a whole different story because they'll hit you no matter what. But in high sec, they want to know whether or not the amount of the losses that they're going to take to kill you is worth it. If they can't scan you, they don't know, and most likely, they're not going to do anything to you. So, this one is set up to be very quick. Now, most of you fly around and you fly around. Let's say you fly around in a shuttle. They're like 3 AU in speed. This one is 8.25. Um, that's pretty high, pretty high speed. And its, um, it's navigation speed here is, is it's very quick. It's very quick. But at the same time, these, um, these things, this is a bit of skill to get to this. So you can take these bits and you can do them up as, as best as you can. You may have to go tier one stuff or lesser stuff until you're higher skill. Um, but the, one other thing that's really important about these ships is that they can work cloaked. And so once you get your covert ops uh, trained, you can work cloaked. I even work cloaked in high sec. And so I appear right at the gate. And then when I'm coming out the other side, they see me for a split second. I'm disappeared and I'm gone. I even, I even work cloak and high sec. When you're doing low sec, it's very, very important because you can hide from everybody very, very easily. And you can maneuver around. You can go to a safe spot and everything very easily. Now, uh, high sec runs don't pay as well as low sec runs do. And low sec runs, though, you, get, you, you have a lot more danger. I've been killed four times in my transport ships. Now, I can tell you that I have made enough money to cover those losses, but um, you know one of them is very severe, and I paid dearly for it. So, the um, in a, in a ship like this, it's worth a couple hundred million, and you're hauling half a billion or whatnot. Uh, each time I've been blown up in in one of these, which has happened twice, I had already delivered my cargo, and uh, so I got um, I got popped in one of these. Uh, twice in uh, no once in high once in low sec I was exiting a station and they targeted me immediately um, and they 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 one shot me I can't remember what it was that that hit me but um, it was a big ship they one shot me thank God I didn't have any cargo on board the other time I accidentally I accidentally accepted a contract into null sec and I don't take contracts into null sec. Nullsec is a very scary place, uh, and in fact, you can accept contracts that you can't even dock up at the station. It's possible, and then you're really screwed. So, the um, uh, my Nullsec run, I accidentally um, accepted this. I delivered it successfully. And one pro tip, if you have something that's really dangerous and you have to go through a dangerous area, right at server up is when you want to move through the dangerous area. Everybody's not set up yet. So you wait and you watch your client for it to say that the, the game is back up, log in, and do that dangerous section. So on my way back out of, uh, out of NullSec, I had people chasing me. It was later in the day. And they caught me. They caught me in a warp bubble. Actually, the, it was the third warp bubble in a row that they got me in. So it was fun, though. So this is, this is good for... Um, for doing uh, um, high security stuff, and it's very, very fast. Uh, there are other uh, fits for this, and so this is another example fit of one that can hold a lot more space. The other one held 4,500. This one holds 13,400. And 
Um, in all of these, I always have my covert ops and um, a micro warp. Micro warp, you got to be able to punch through things. Uh, this right here, uh, the ECM burst helps to keep them from targeting you. And uh, so uh, a lot of people will run with, um, with multiples of those. I just, this is my setup right here. So there's another type of uh, ship here as well, which is the deep space transport. Um, this, is, um, this is what it looks like right here. It looks kind of funny. Uh, it has a lot of junk in the trunk there. Uh, a lot of trunk space. And so uh, without anything else in here, uh, and I'll share some fits uh, with, with you for these, this has something special. This actually has, so while the cargo hold here it says 5600, this ship is not currently fit. Um, it does have fleet space, and depending on your, um, on your transport ship's skill level, um, you can get this up to 60,000 um, or above. Uh, currently, at my skill level, I can do 55,000 in, in this ship. And it's kind of a, a misnomer. It doesn't mean that you can't uh, um, do um, uh, just because it's it's fleet space doesn't mean that you can't put other stuff in there because you can. It's just a little bit different way of accessing it. So uh, it's kind of interesting. These can be really really tanky. I'm going to share a couple of tank fits with you on this and. Um, and so this is this is something that's good for for higher amount of stuff. Um, there are people who take these into low sec, and uh, they're they're daring. Um, I a little bit timid of that, but uh, when going through uh, high sec stuff and I need the extra space and it's not worth you know too much, uh, I will I will take this. Uh, but I'm going to be extra careful in Udema and Narja. Uh, those are places that that are very, very dangerous. They're pinch points. There are ways around them, um, but uh, you increase your travel by like three times to go around them. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a ways. So, and then last, uh, I'll show you a freighter here. And uh, so this freighter right here, uh, the, way it's, um, the way it's set up is um, I carry both um, both uh, items for uh, bringing the defense up. I can get my defense well over 300,000 and then I have items for expanding the cargo hold. And what you'll find is, is that these can be swapped out real easy. You only have three of these slots right here, three low slots. I carry this stuff with me and I'm able to get 1.1 million cargo units in here. That's a lot. Now, this can be easily scanned and it is slow as molasses. I mean, look at this. 1.37 AU is the max speed of it. Uh, I have one more um, skill level to go and that'll go up to like 1.38 or something like that. It's not very much. Uh, it, it turns like molasses and I've been killed in one of these before. So I was hauling four billion worth of stuff in it, and I went through Udema. Uh, I got to a sector just outside of Udema, and a bunch of hurricanes um, cornered me and started nosing into me, causing me to not be able to align correctly for my next jump. They killed me. They killed me because they determined that the price of their hurricanes, you know, that, that it would uh, these guys attacking me that you know how much it was they were going to lose because Concord will attack them and how much stuff was going to drop they calculated that it was worth their risk and they have another freighter standing by ready to pick stuff up swoop in pick all the shit up get the hell out of there and um, and so I made their day uh, I took a 5.3 billion isk loss that day because the stuff that I had on board was was had collateral of 4 million and then the ship is worth over 1.3 billion. So um, that was a very huge loss. I've learned my lesson. You don't necessarily carry that kind of amount of stuff in, in here through there. 
And so um, there's other tricks, which there will be more videos later of tricks showing how to tell what areas are hot, what are not. And then there are alternate routes and there are scam contracts. And I'm going to show you one of those now. Um, and so in, um, in the contracts here, this is, this is all contracts from one person. This person, I'm calling them out as a scammer. Um, they, they make gank contracts. So they um, put together these contracts. Here's what one looks like. And you say, holy shit, I'm going to make 40 million for making this run. And, uh, you know, two and a half million isk per jump. That pays pretty good. You know, you think, I'm going to do really well on that. Well, here's the facts that um, you're carrying four billion worth of stuff, supposedly. And the. Um, and so they've insured it. You have to put up 3.9 billion uh, collateral to take on this to make that 40 million. So you accept the order, and then you you take and um, you have to have this collateral on hand to cover it. And so that's deducts from your bank account. And then you have the cargo. You take it. You run it when you deliver. You get your collateral back and you get the payment. Seems fair enough. Well, in the ca in this case, what we've got here is we've got somebody who is uh, taking uh, these items. This person right here is putting items in there that are le worth less than two billion, and they're valuing it. They're overvaluing it um, at. Um, at 3.9 billion on this, I've seen other contracts he's done where he values it at 4.9 million or billion, and pays only 30 million. And what you can see here is a pattern, and this is this is a classic gank pattern. So Amar to Dodixie, and Dodixie to Amar, this causes you on its route to go through both Narja and Udema, and if you take the short way. The long way is well over 30 jumps and takes you down through Heck. And uh, Heck is an area where there's a lot of um, 0.5 security sectors. That's a problem. So the um, so either way, you're kind of screwed. And so what he's done here is he is hoping that uh, that you are going to get killed along the way. And he's playing the odds. So what he's done is, is he's paying about 30 million per jump. This is an older one. I'm not showing you know, some of the other stuff. Um, and then a lot of stuff he's, he's doing at 4.9 billion. So he's paying out to have this stuff move. So he has an investment of less than 2 billion in the items that are in there. And then he values it like 4.9 billion and pays out 30 million. And I counted it up, and in 46 runs, he's had one success of a ship getting killed. And he made um, about half a billion to a billion, somewhere in there. So what he's done is he's set this up so that, it, so that it's dangerous. And I wouldn't doubt at all that once a contract is accepted, that he tells it either himself or his corp or whatever, put this person on the watch list when they come through they're worth a lot I'll pay somebody a hundred million if they get the kill shot something like that and then everybody's looking for this particular person who's doing this run now how did I figure out that this was suspect look at this so if you go if you go Amar to Dodixi and it's this it's 920,525 Another one, these are the exact same size. And, um, and so he put up two contracts, two people took them. And then Dodixie to Amar. And then Dodixie to Amar, they're the exact same size. Dodixie to Amar, Amar to Dodixie, they're all the same size. You want to know why? It's because as soon as it arrives at one station, he just packages the same stuff up again and sets it right back out to the other station. And there's plenty of people who are willing to do these, not knowing that they're actually putting themselves in danger. Now, 
Um, <clears throat> I had accepted one of his contracts and realized what was going on. You don't know what's in these until you accept it. And so he could have a four billion, five billion valuation on something, and then you see that it's just a station container in there or something else. And you're thinking, holy shit, this thing's worth a million. Now, part of part of his, you know, what he needs to do is he has to put value in there to make you a juicy target. And at just under two billion in in value in there is kind of like the, the breaking point of where the ship might be attacked. So for one billion, ship probably is not going to be attacked. For two billion, yeah, you may be. For three billion, you gotta be careful. For four billion, yes. And there are people, I kid you not, who run tens of billions through these channels sometimes, and I think that they are nuts. Don't don't run it if you can't afford to lose it. So that is um, that is a uh, fake contract. Now let me show you how to actually look up contracts here. Now um, <clears throat> in here we've got available contracts, and um, so I'm going to look at all regions. And if let's just say that I'm using my small little ship. That, um, that is really fast, but only holds 4,500. So, and I'm willing to go in high sec and low sec. Null sec, no. I've got that unchecked. So, uh, I can put in here, I'm willing to do a run for as little as 2 million. Like if there's, you know, my character's currently at Jita. Let's say I'm running next door uh, to perimeter or something like that. And um, they want to pay 2 million for it. Sure, why not? It's, it's an easy little trip. Okay, right, so 40... 4,500 is my max that I'm putting in here. And this way you can only see stuff that you're capable of running to. And if you are just starting out, you may want to filter by saying, okay, I don't want to hold more than 100 million worth of stuff. Okay, so I'm doing this. Okay, now it's all regions. And what I want to do is I want to filter by reward. So here's one that is Oh, look at this. This is perfect. So, well, maybe not so perfect, but um, it's only five units. And at that five units, uh, you can fit that in any ship. In fact, you can fit that in a shuttle, although I don't recommend carrying 700 million worth of stuff in a shuttle. Although the likelihood is that you're probably not going to be scanned by another player while you're in a shuttle. It's 32 jumps and it pays a 10 million reward. And um, let's see here. It's all in high sec. So you could do it. So it pays 312, um, 312,000 ISK per jump, which is not very high. A lot of stuff you want to see, you know, in the, the, the million range or higher. It's got 700 million in collateral that you're going to have to put up. I would not run this in a T1 ship. I would, I would want a T2 ship, most definitely. You don't need to take your freighter out to do this. Your freighter, you'll be killing yourself if you take your freighter out to do some, you know, five, uh, five unit run. So it is a 32, um, 32 jumps. It's a long trip. You never fly autopilot, especially when you're carrying cargo. You will get popped. That's one of the things about code, is their edict is, that they say that anybody who is running on autopilot is a bot and should be killed. That's just the way they do it, even though that's a function of the game. So anyway, this is a contract that if you had the 700 million to put up, you could run it and you could make 10 million. You'd want, hopefully, something at the other end. You know, you gotta go all the way out to Gamma. So, so maybe there's another run going to Gamma that you can take out there. You don't wanna run empty one direction. Uh, let's see, here's one for nine jumps that um, is Dodixi to Udema. Uh, Udema is, that, is the sector where the most freighters are killed uh, by far. And, you know, it only pays five million, although it's a small one. So um, here's another really small uh, item. And let's look at uh, maybe number of jumps and let's do by... Um, by current system and research. Okay, so we've got 
We've got one here for 12 jumps that will pay 5 million, 500 million collateral. So this one, uh, does that go through low sec? No, it'll say down here if it goes through low sec or null sec. And so you gotta, you gotta be careful and watch for that. This one right here, um, this one right here does go through, through low sec. Uh, they're giving you two days to complete it, which is important in case you have to wait for a server up. They're only paying 291,000 ISK per jump, 150 million valuation, not worth it. Not worth it. It's, it doesn't pay enough. So here is this one here, 37 jumps for 5 million, and it goes into low sec. Forget it. There's nothing here for you to take. So let's, um, let's bump this up to, actually, let's just remove this. And so now we're going to search again, and we're going to take out the freighter. I'm willing to take out the freighter. So here, this one will take a freighter, 450 million in collateral. It pays 2.5 million doesn't pay very much. It's only three jumps and the route on this is going to be fairly safe. So let's say that your collateral that you have, um, that you're willing to do something for 200 million. So you just put 200 in there. You don't put the whole thing in there. And okay, so here is two runs to do and both of these going into low sec. Yep. So you wouldn't, with your freighter, you'd uncheck this. You wouldn't be going into low sec. There's nothing. So you got to build up your money to uh, be able to um, to be able to carry some amount of collateral. And so here is wow. Here's one that pays thirty million. And Let's look at, oh, it goes through low sec. See, even though I had checked in here, unchecked low sec, you still got to check because it, um, it can still take you through low sec. So that one's scrapped out. That one is going to be for a jump freighter. That's why it pays 30 million. So this one right here, low sec, nah. um, let's, let's change this by reward. Okay, this one um, is low sec. Can't do that. Jita to Amar. Okay, so this one forces you to go through one of the pinch points. It's only nine jumps away. It's one million S per jump. 300 million collateral. It's going to pay you nine million. And you can get runs from Amar back up to Jita. Perfect. Take that one. So you would hit accept. I'm not going to hit accept on this. This character that I'm showing you this on does not do transport. <laughs> so, and if I accepted it, um, and I couldn't deliver it, then I immediately am going to lose the collateral. Now, I will, however, be able to keep the items that were in here. So it's not a total loss because I can take those items and I can put them on market. Now, a lot of times I look at these and sometimes they're undervalued. I get tempted. You know, some people could, could use this as a moneymaker. I have taken runs that were like 1.5 billion and the items in it on market would go for two billion. That's a 500 million uh, uh, ISK profit. If you're not very honorable, you could just instantly fail it. So you've bought that stuff at under market value and then you go out and sell it and you make the money. It's gonna show up as a failure for you though because your, um, your history is available um, with contracts. In fact, let me uh, let me just bring up somebody here. This is somebody who's spamming right now. In um, this this person is is spamming right now in Jita, saying that um, that they're selling Plex or whatever. It's a scam, I'm sure. They have a bounty of 1.2 billion. You know, people don't like this person. Okay, right, you want to see their contracts? It's really easy to see what contracts a person is running. And so you click up here on actions and show contracts. In the contracts here, um, let's see here. There's apparently, let's see this person's name, I think is, yeah. Apparently there's two people with the same stuff. Okay, so this is all item exchange. But you're able to see all of this. And so um, let's just look for fun. 
what is it that they're doing? So they're saying 1.99 billion on this stuff. And um, I don't know that it's worth that, but it might be, especially if they're, they're doing the same thing to everybody. See, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Okay, so they're, um, they're putting together this package. Most likely this is a scam. And um, so these aren't transport. They're not doing any transport. But um, this is where you can see all the contracts a person is doing. And uh, in this case, with this scam, what they're doing is they're saying, hey, we've got this whole ship package for you, like an Orca, and we're going to you know, have it fully fitted for you and stuff. And it'll have an Orca blueprint in it and not the actual Orca ship. And you'll miss that, and then you'll way overpay. Yeah, it has stuff like that. So, so anyway, you got to be careful with your contracts. And, um, and so that's, that's kind of the basics. Now, in the description, I have uh, copied into there some of the fittings for some of my ships and uh, some stuff that I found that work well that you can work your way up to. The, you're able to copy and paste those back into the game to import them from clipboard so that uh, you don't have to go searching for each individual item. And the, the fact is I have been able to make 90 or 100 million an hour transporting stuff, but it's very coordinated and typically um, those contracts that where you can make the really high money only appear during prime time when they're having when the the guys who are hiring the haulers are having a hard time getting their stuff to move and they want it right away people all the time will pay to have it ASAP and uh, one last tip uh, join the haulers channel not the haulers channel the haulers hub and there will be a link in the description for that uh, that channel is where the guys who professionally use shippers, there are a lot of manufacturers that are in there, that um, they manufacture the stuff and they send it out to all their different marketplaces. And you can see the contracts posted in there. The juiciest ones are posted in there. Also, there's some fake ones posted in there. So you got to be careful. Anyway, hope that helps get you started on hauling. I'll have more videos later on very specific techniques with each of the hauling things, you know, more on how to accept contracts, more on, on how to fly these different ships because you take thing, different things into account. So I may do some videos just specifically on each type of ship. And just because my ships are all Galante doesn't mean that if you're a Mar, Mimitar, Caldari, you don't have equivalents. The, stu the stuff applies to each one of them because all of them have freighters, all of them have T2 haulers, and, um, and it's all very, very similar. There is a little bit of differences, but not very much. So anyway, hope this all helps, and uh, take care. I'm Marky Dragon. Happy hauling, and fly safe.